Sinking Media in association with Boxro Ade Olodipo. We are at, it's not a The Zone event, no. it's, a, it's a Queensbury event and uh, <laughs> the Saudis, uh, Tyson Fury and Ghanu, what are you doing here? Talk sport, talk sport, like, do you, do you want to come and see this? And I was like, absolutely. Um, look, it's crazy, it's, um, it's crazy, it's fun, it's going to be chaotic, it's Tyson Fury, it's in Ghana. You've almost got to be here. I think if you cover the sport of boxing, if you even touch and like a bit of MMA, then how can you not be here? The WBC heavyweight champion's fighting. So, yeah, I'm intrigued to see what this press is going to be like, just because Ngannou doesn't play. I've interviewed him before. He doesn't joke around. And Fury likes to kind of joke around a little bit. So it could be fireworks on the stage, you know. But, yeah, looking forward to it. Definitely. So we've got to ask you, I don't know what your understanding is. Obviously, most people, when they see Saudis, they think a skill challenge. But we've got a different organisation. I believe it's the same organisation that have been bringing wrestling to the, uh, Saudi Arabia. What do you understand of the two uh, different companies, uh, organisations? Very brief, very little. Um, obviously, so skill challenge obviously work alongside or do things with Eddie Hearn and, and AJ. This seems to be almost a rival organisation, if you like, doing their own thing. And, and I think it's good. I think it's good. Obviously, this kicks off Riyadh season, so it's festivals, it's, it's events like this, it's carnivals. And I think, look, me and you have been lucky enough to have gone to Saudi, so we've seen maybe what a lot of the West don't see. You know, a lot of the West and the propaganda, like, and look, there's still stuff that goes on, but it goes on in every other country. But I haven't been to Saudi a few times. I've enjoyed it. I've never had an issue at all. They've treated us wonderfully. I'm looking forward to going again. But back to the initial question, I think it's good. It's almost like you want competition. They, so they're going to put on this, and then Skills Challenge are going to try and put on Wilder, AJ, and let it, happen. let it happen. The only disappointing thing, I guess, for fight fans, especially UK fight fans, that a lot of the events will be over in Saudi. So AJ Wilder, the dream for me was Wembley Stadium or Nigeria. Very unlikely. Um, AJ Fury, potentially, the dream would be Wembley Stadium. Very unlikely. So that's the only drawback. But at least with their money, they can put on events and we're seeing events like this. Definitely. So I've got a question for you, Ade. Well, obviously, apart from money, what does Tyson Fury gain from beating uh, Francis Ngannou? I'm going to Nothing. ask him this. If I get to ask him, I'm going to ask him this. Nothing. Zero. This is all about money. And this is what I want people to speak about. Like, it's okay to admit it's all about money. It's almost like a, a few of the Premier League footballers are going over AJ there. AJ said that recently as well. Yeah. Just say it's money. It's fine. AJ said, so what, what, what am I fighting for? Money. That's what it's about, right? A lot of the Premier League footballers, I saw Jordan Henderson talk about he's not going over there for money. I'm like, shut up. It's okay just to say it because we all understand it. A lot of us would go over there if offered a great deal of money. Tyson Fury gets nothing out of it. This is all Francis Ngannou. If Francis Ngannou beats the WBC heavyweight champion, then it's crazy. It's liftoff, right? And we can see more fights. For Fury, it's a case of, I think he can beat Ngannou with one hand tied behind his back personally, but he's going to make a lot of money. So you weigh up the risk-reward. The risk is semi-big because it's a big guy in Ngannou, but the reward is massive. So I don't blame him for taking it. I've never blamed him for taking it. I just want to see the other fights, the undisputed fights. But if this rolls on my table, and it's, let's just say, 50 million, who would not take it? You'd be stupid. Anyone would take it. So you've got to take it. But, yeah, he gains nothing from it. It's not completely impossible, but if Francis Ngana pulls this off, what does it mean for boxing and Tyson Fury? Wow. Dude. Dude. If a guy that's never had a professional boxing fight in his life, and let's be honest, I, I'm a big MMA fan, so I watch him a lot, and he's not got the best boxing ability in MMA, were to beat the greatest boxer, heavyweight boxer of this generation, dude, it's, it doesn't look good. It does, it, it not, just forget beating him. Even if he causes him problems, there's an issue there. Because this isn't like Floyd when he fought Conor, when Floyd's right at the end and Conor's a bit bigger. Tyson's bigger. Tyson's still very much fresh, very serviceable, coming off a couple of easy wins against Chisora and White. I don't even know how to answer the question. I, I've not even thought about that. Like for me, this is so one-sided. I can't even think about the uh, Ngannou beating him. But Ngannou's a big guy. I spoke to Chisora yesterday, and Chisora thinks that Ngannou can put him down, like he can clip him. And because he's so awkward, I mean, what kind of sparring do you even bring for Ngannou? Do you know, he, I don't think he knows what he's doing. So how do you prepare for that? So you never know, you know, dude. You never know. Quick question on uh, the pay-per-view numbers. Do you think this might be Mayweather McGregor, which did 4.3 million worldwide? No chance. Absolutely no way, dude. If this gets over a million, it's done well. It's ticked all the boxes. Like, I understand the idea of it's got a, you've got the boxing element and the MMA element, so you're bringing in the MMA eyes as well. Ngannou was never really a draw in MMA like Conor was. Ngannou was never a draw in MMA like John Jones or Ronda Rousey. You know, I don't know if Ngannou's ever broken the half a million pay-per-view buys before, so you're not bringing a behemoth over. And Fury's done good numbers, but again, he's not 
Has he gone over a million once? I don't think he has. So, no, I think a, a million would do good. Um, it's not going to do Garcia tank numbers. I guess they're going to have to work out the price point. Is it going to be UK £25 or is it going to be American $80? They have to get that correct. But I think a million nowadays is unbelievably good. And that's as far as it goes for me. Definitely. So I know you did a reaction on your YouTube channel, uh, Adil Odipa, for those that are interested uh, about the Chris. Of course, well, of, of course they're interested. Yeah. <laughs> for those that are interested, hit him and subscribe because your numbers are growing as well. Um, the Chris Eubank Jr. win. I just want to quickly get your reaction yeah. to that. Just a short version of uh, what you did on your own YouTube channel. Yeah, look, first of all, I thought it was a fantastic win. For a guy to have knocked you out last time, and I know that's controversial, was it the old or what it was, but regardless, the guy knocked you out. For you to get in there, change trainer, and completely outclass him, you've got to respect that because I've, I was with the thinking that Bomac can't teach him what he needs to teach him in a space of six weeks. And that's all they had with each other, six weeks, because obviously Bomac was getting Crawford ready. So I thought it was a fantastic performance. I think the best performance of his career, considering the pressure going into the fight. Um, Liam Smith looked awful. Let, let's be frank, it wasn't, it wasn't a great Liam Smith. He spoke about you know having to cut so much weight because he was injured. Well, control your weight, dude. Do you know what I mean? Why, why balloon up that high? Control your weight. So... Yeah, I don't know, man. For Christo, it's a weird one because the 160 division's awful right now. Alam Canali, is that a big money fight? Will, will Brits even know who Alam Canali is? I don't really know. Carlos Adames, no. Jamal Charles has been out for nearly three years. So I get, people are upset with him, but I get why he calls that Connor, Kel, because they're easy fights. They're easy fights to make. They're big fights in the UK as well. Um, so yeah, look, good performance. I don't mind Connor or Kel fights. Obviously, connor has got his stuff he needs to sort out first. But I, I understand why he's called those guys out because the 160 division just, there is no one exciting in there for him to fight, no one. So I get the call outs. Definitely so. And as always, I would like to urge people, uh, give Adi a sub on YouTube because he does uh, a lot of good breakdowns, pre-fight, post-fight. You let him know where they can do that. Yeah, please, if you can. I mean, look, I, for this guy to give me a plug, it's, it's incredible. Um, Adi Oladupo, the green chair. Uh, we do a lot of post pre as well, but I, I, I follow this guy. I watch this guy and I learn. And I steal some stuff as well. So if you ever come to my channel and think, well, he said that, yeah, because I stole it. But yeah, give me a plug, give me a follow, and I appreciate it. And enjoy this. Enjoy this madness, madness carnage. Enjoy it all. Thank you, brother. Cheers, man.